And right now, I don't know if anybody is having more fun in the nation than the people in Boulder, Colorado. I'll tell you this right here, right now. Uh, the PJ, the private jet line in Boulder, wherever they're landing, it's got to be more busy. It's got to be busier than Teterboro or whatever they love fly the private jets in here. You had several. If not many, I mean, Stephen A. Smith, Shannon Sharp, Michael Irvin, uh, Cameron, Mace, everybody seemed to be on the sidelines for Colorado as they go and, uh, and not upset, rather, beat Nebraska and beat them handily. Coach Prime is 2-0. and Yeah, not only is he 2-0. and First of all, what up, everybody out there? VJ Vernon Husky, Big Vanilla Funny here. Uh, yeah, Prime's 2-0. and Not only is he 2-0, and it just, it feels different, man. It looks different. It feels different. Um, I thought... Nebraska put up a, a a very great effort in the first half, especially uh, their defense. Their defense was outstanding early in the game for the first half. If uh, Nebraska didn't turn the ball over the way they did, we might have gotten uh, a different football game here. But as I said last week, I'm all in, man. I'm not going to waver about it. I like what I see. I like what I feel. Like you said, Stephen A., Michael Lervin, Cameron, uh, Shannon Sharp, and it's only and think about it. It's only gonna get better. It's only gonna get more star study. This reminds me if you guys remember when Dion was with the Falcons, and you remember when MC Hammer and Too Legit to Quit was out and was the number one record in the world, and him and Dion became friends. MC Hammer had like himself and fifty of his dancers on the sidelines for the Falcons for football games. This is like when Pete Carroll had USC going out here. And you can see Will Farrell and uh, Snoop Dogg gets the ball handed to him after uh, a USC touchdown. Just celebrities of the celebrities. That's what he's building. And he's helping change college football. I Like, I love this. I love what I saw today. Shadir Sanders, man, I, I'm, I'm telling you. he's it, it, outside of Sunday Ann, kid right there. Out, outside of Ann Arbor, he's my favorite college football player this year. Outside of Ann Arbor. And that concludes anybody that's on my crush team, my side chick, the Florida State Seminoles. But what I saw today, man, I'm, I just love it. But Sanders, he's so poised, patient, confident, smart. He took some sacks today, but those are smart sacks, Martin. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't, don't force it. Don't throw a pick. Don't turn the ball over. Take a smart sack and live to play another down. But I, I just love what I saw today. And Nebraska fought hard. Their defense played really, really well. But their offense, man, is just it's well, bad. And it's their quarterback, Jeff Sims, who's a Georgia Tech transfer. Uh, their offense has scored 10 and 14 points in their first two games this year. They have eight turnovers, Martin. They are a minus six already. And I know you love this because one of your favorite coaches of all time is <laughs> coaching Nebraska now. Hey. I know you are you still getting that Matt Rule tattoo or are you going to are you going to nah, wait on I got to thank Matt Rule, man. Oh. I got to thank Matt Rule because they keep putting up these soft lines against him like he covers the spread. Yeah. <laughs> like, Matt Rule and his I mean, it's it's I was told Matt Rule is a program builder. Yeah. And I'll be honest. I wasn't super locked in to Temple football. I saw what he did in Baylor after our Bryles. Yeah. I wasn't locked in the Temple, but I was pretty much. I watched every single game he coached for the Carolina Panthers, and I've watched two now for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. And I'm telling you, VJ, it's my dream job. Just one day, I want to get hired as a head coach because I'll get fired. Ain't get fired in any. I'll yeah. get fired. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, what I'm I, it, it'll be quick too. Like I, I'm, I'm, I'm probably a one and done guy. Money, money's guaranteed. And but the money is guaranteed, money's baby. Guaranteed. Matt Rule is stealing bread right now. <laughs> Lord have mercy, because yeah. you're right. Four turnovers, an interception plus three fumbles, yep. and it's not like it's not like Colorado was hitting people and the ball was popping out. No, they are fumbling quarterback running back exchanges. Yeah, and did you see that defensive line pick the ball up with one hand? One I was hand. like, oh my goodness, one they hand. got some men. Yeah, yeah. oh no, on no this he's line. got yeah, they've got some grown men. The one thing I love about Colorado, and I think, is going to be able to carry them to the eight wins or more that I predicted last week is at the skill position. They're they as good, stacked, they're, they're, they're as, good as anybody in America. At the skill position, the Colorado Buffaloes are as good as anybody in the nation. And you want to look at some of the games today and some of the traps that we think they can games they can lose. I'm watching Utah and Baylor earlier today and Baylor coughed that Baylor wet their pants and coughed that up. And this Utah game isn't until November 11th. There's a team I look at and say, okay, I know your quarterback's out right now, but you go on the road to Baylor and you struggle like that. Do you think the team that you're going to see from Boulder in November is the team you see today. No, these this team's going to get better. They're going to get they're going to get more. I think the defense is going to improve. They're going to gel more. I like I said, I just I, I love what I'm seeing here. Nebraska is really in trouble offensively. Just, just on Jeff Sims because I don't think people really know and follow this kid. He's three years at Georgia Tech. 
and then he transfers. But if you go back and you really watch the Georgia Tech tape, he was okay there. He wasn't even really considered good there. And he's doing things. You're talking about quarterback, running back exchange. No, he's dropping the snap. Like at shotgun, he's dropping the snap. And both times, why are you trying to bend down and pick the ball up? You know once the ball hits the ground, defensive players, they, they're coming harder now because they want to get that fumble. Fall on the ball. Live, do, do what Shadir's doing. Live to play another down. You're trying to do too much. Three fumbles today, four interceptions on the year, I one touchdown pass. I, I'm just, but at Georgia Tech, you can see it there. I think he only threw for 1,800 yards once there, Martin. Like, he's not, he hasn't even never thrown for 2,000 yards, Martin, in a college football season. So they, they, they have to fix that there. Matt Rule's got to figure that out. But I will say this. The Nebraska defense today, you might remember this, back in the day, their defense, they were known for defense. They used to call their defensive players the black shirts. And I forget what coach it was, but it was a coach that came in and took the name from them because they were getting, you know, the scores getting run up on them game after game after game. I think they're earning that back in Nebraska. I got to give them props, man. That defense just got wore down. Can't ask your defense to keep getting put in bad position and, and still play tough and hold down an offense, as I said a minute ago, that has skilled position players that are as good as anybody in America. And I'll say this, too. I agree with you on the Nebraska defense part. And that's what really impressed me about Colorado today was they went out against TCU and, you know, Sanders throws for 500 yards. Mm -hmm. You know, Dylan Edwards is making guys miss in the open field. That was, it was methodical today for most of yes. the game until it got, you know, it got a little out of hand. But just this in part because, I mean, how many you, – you, you can't survive – a four to no. nothing turnover margin. No. Like if you do, that's incredible, yeah. right? But uh, you, you, what you saw today was they played an entirely different style than they did against TCU, yep. and still came out and was successful. And what I think more than anything, it influence or shows the influence of the CEO head coach. Man, Deion Sanders is not calling plays. Deion Sanders is not, you know, he's not worried with that. He is coaching all sides of the ball here. And so then when you go and you say, okay, you're, so now you're in a meeting with your offensive coordinator and you say, you know what, Nebraska does this, Nebraska does that, this is the way we need to attack that. You're in a meeting with your defensive coordinator and you're saying, we didn't stop the run last week, Nebraska is going to try to run the ball, how do we adjust mm -hmm. and how do we stop that, right? And then you give your assistant coaches the leeway to do it, you know, and, that, and that's what – being a head coach is supposed to be. Yep, I'm with you on so that. So all you know, if, and you know, if you don't like the way he's moving, if you don't like the way he's talking, that's one thing differently entirely. However, the thing that I love about this, bring back the CEO head coach Man. who's responsible for everything. And you know what? Last week I sat up here and I said USC would beat Colorado. As I sit here and look at it, though, Colorado. Is a more is a healthier program today than USC is. You know why? Because they pay attention to all sides of the ball. Yeah, they're not giving up 28, uh, 28 points to San Jose State. No, right? It, it, no. It, it's it. There's no just erasure of of the defense. Like they out there. I mean, one of his kids is playing cornerback, and he is in the alley on every running play. Yeah, and it, not only that, if if you watch Dion, let's, let's just go back to the Dion effect. I watched kickoff noon, big kickoff here on our big you know, noon kickoff, big there noon kickoff here on our, our great network here, Fox Sports Radio and and at the FS1. And when they start, they introduce the guys, the cameras pan in the crowd, and then they go, "Here he comes!" And a couple of golf carts pull up in the back, and Dion gets off one and gets mic'd up and gets walked to the stage and sits up there. They show the kids walking in. Anybody in the studio right now, you ever seen college football kids do the stadium walk and they tell you where the suits and the ties are for looking? It's all picked out by Dion. Suits by Men Warehouse. Ties by Vera Wang. This, dude, these kids are going to want to play for him. Also just announced two days ago, the number one quarterback in all of the nation in high school, class of 2025. Guess who he's added to his list and will be at the USC game in two weeks? Those same Colorado Buffaloes. Why do you think that is? Because Coach Prime is, dude, I'm just, I'm, I'm sucked in. I, I, I sound like a little girl. I, I, no, I, I, I am. I'm sucked in, bro. Because this, this feels, it feels good. College football needs this. Normally, Martin, with college football, we get kind of prickly coaches. They don't want to talk a lot or answer a lot. You know, kind of quirky. When have we had a guy like this? 
in college football as a coach. I can't re- I, I can't remember. It's, Maybe it's, Bobby Bowden that had that type my, uh, of personality. It's one of my beefs with the Saints this year. If you're not going to be good, at least be interesting. Be yeah, be entertaining. Right? At least be fun. Be entertaining. Now Colorado was good. Yeah, yeah, right? yes. Now I didn't know how good they were going to be to start the year, and apparently no one else did. Right, except for Deion Sanders and those who believe, and, and those kids, yeah, <laughs> right? yeah. and those who believe, yeah. because they are one win away from being uh, what under the hook in their win total. It was it's three and a half, three and a half, start the yep. year. three and a half, right? Yeah, I don't know. They probably will have I'll take the over on that. I have a feeling that they'll beat a <laughs> uh, twenty point underdog Colorado State next year. You can't block a soul. Yeah, right. I have a feeling that'll happen. You love that offensive line, that offensive line. I know. I'm like, just joking. <laughs> but I, this is the thing. And if I was a college football coach, I'd be like, dog, this is this sucks. Yeah. Right? Because here's the rub. Dion is eliminating excuses. Yep. For other people. Right? Dion is eliminating excuses for others. Period. Stop. Because here's the rub. With the rules as they are in the NCAA, you can get who you want. When you want them. When you want them. When you want them. You can get who you want. Yep. Deion went and, and he's doing exactly what a college head coach should be doing. He's putting himself out there as the guy. He's like, "Come here, and I will build you." <laughs> you know what I'm saying yep. you will you will eat here, you will live good here yep. in Colorado. Going out and, and, and instead of out there worrying about nil and getting all caught up, it's like my dad used to tell me this all the time. Especially considering the time I went to college, right? I went to college 2008, 2009 was my first year. So it's Obama versus McCain running for oh, president, okay. right? And so there's these people on the diag, which is Michigan is the quad. And they're just, you know, Michigan Republicans, Michigan Democrats. And they're just yelling and fussing and just going back and forth, you know, and just arguing, like legitimately arguing with each other. Everybody's like 22 years old. No one knows what they're talking about. So my dad says to me, I tell him the story and he goes, you know what? It's a reminder. Don't get messed up trying to change the world. Yep. Right? Don't get messed up. Look, that's what it is. <laughs> that's how father. it's going to be. Yep. You know what I'm saying? It's like learn how to adjust to the rules that, like, there are rules and there are laws. Learn which ones matter and learn how to adjust to them. Yep. Deion Sanders knows that every one of his kids is on social media. Every one of them has a Twitter or X. They have their handles on the back Instagram, of their practice jerseys. Uh, 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 Twitter, <laughs> Instagram, uh, TikTok, whatever. They got cameras in the practice. They got cameras in the locker room. Imagine a Nick Saban-led team with cameras in the locker room. Mm. Like, like not, not putting together a documentary to come out at the end of the season. Yeah. Putting out something that's going to come out in 15 minutes. That's not happening at a lot of these schools. And as a result, it's going to be the reason why Colorado will have their pick of the litter when it's all said and done. After this season, Man. even if even if they finish 6-6, six and six, which at the start of the year would have been a massive upgrade, yeah. a massive, a, a huge win. Just keep it in perspective, right? It'd be a letdown now. It would be, but that's, that's why I said I want to keep it in perspective. I, I don't, you. you know, it's I not, you. it's not, uh, it's not fair to do it, to, to, like really, because as soon as they lose, people are going to pile on. Oh. But. They got a couple more weeks. He has. The pick of the litter. Because you can't tell me that all these little kids, young men, don't want to go play for Coach Prime. Because you know what it is? It looks fun. It looks energetic. And it looks like the future of college football. Matt Rule looks like he might be sitting behind a microphone like me and you soon. 